Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 27 of Darwell20's Let's Play series, where it's time to get Applied Energistics up and running. You guys know I always get excited when I get either an AE or a refined storage system, and, you know, this time I chose AE, because I wanted to check out some of the new stuff. Applied Energistics has new things in it, as of 118. Um, they changed up how some mechanics work, they added some stuff. I'm interested to see how it works. And then there's also some other mods that integrate with Applied Energistics that add things for mechanism, and there's even a Batania mana thing, so okay, that's cool. Sending mana through Applied Energistics? What could go wrong? Um, so what I want to do today is get prepped with some automation. Uh, so I've got some inscribers here ready to go, and what I'm going to do is I, I kind of just prepared uh, where the energy is going to connect into these inscribers, right? So all i got to do is give them all a good connection point, and they should all be getting power now, which is nice. I like that, okay, cool. Um, and I'm gonna use laser IO to automate this to the best of my abilities. And I'm gonna see how good of a job I did with laser IO, uh, because I'm going to make it a point to, to fully automate this with strictly laser IO and channels and fun things. So let's see if we can really do something cool here and, uh, and and automate this. So my goal when I automate these machines is to make it so that I can just put resources into an input chest and they will spit those resources out. Do I want a separate output chest? I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say yes for a separate output chest. Um, that's just what I want. I could have the input and output chest be the same, but meh. Or they, they could be the same. Well, you know, maybe I do want... No, I want a separate one. Yeah, I'm going to go separate. That sounds good to me. Um, so here's what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to have basically a line of laser connector nodes, and I want to make sure that they're all synced up to each other. So where's my laser wrench? That should be cool. So you connect to here. You connect to this guy and this guy. You connect to this guy and this guy, and you connect to that guy. Now all my lasers should be nice and connected. So my goal is I want to put resources into this chest and have the output spit out over here, okay? So let's talk about what we're making from Applied Energistics today because it's important to know what we're making and how to make it before we start automating the making of it. Did that make sense? Shh, it did. So what we want to make um, are these three resources. We need to make logic processors calculation processors and engineering processors these three components are used for almost everything in applied energistics um so it you know almost all the the crafting processes are going to need these in some way shape or form um in order to get these each of these requires a piece of printed silicon and redstone okay so all three of these need the same printed silicon and redstone um each of these um four prerequisite components, these guys and these, are made with the inscriber presses that we got last episode from the meteorites. So printed silicon is an inscriber press with silicon, and you get printed silicon. Um, logic press plus gold equals logic. Engineering press plus diamond equals printed engineering. And then inscriber calculation press plus certus quartz crystal equals printed calculation circuit. So long story short, uh, we need four machines, each dedicated to uh, one of them will make Certus, one will make Diamond, one will make Gold, and one will make Silicon components. And then the fifth machine will combine printed Silicon, which is made in one of the four, with one of the other components, either, you know, the Logic, the, the Certus, or the Engineering with Redstone. Um, so that's the plan. Now, inscribers are sided like furnaces are, so you need to insert items into the correct side and extract from the correct side in order to get the correct resource. And that is the challenge that we're going to solve using laser IO and sneaky mode and filters and channels and other things. Sound fun? So let's do it. All right, so let's think about what we want to do here, right? Um, so I know I want in this inscriber, let's start with Usually I do something like calculation first, because that's Certus, and then logic, because that's gold, and then engineering, because that's diamond, and then finally silicon. Cool. So those presses just stay there. 
Let's now figure out which side of the block we need to insert and whether or not the inscriber will block the insertion of certus quartz because it has a logic press. Because there's two ways this could work. One, the inscriber is smart and says, because I have a logic press, I only accept gold. Two, the inscriber is dumb and it lets certus quartz in there. So let's start with this guy on the down. We'll extract. Pretty much one item at a time should be fine. And I don't need to worry about any of these settings just yet. So he's ready to extract on the white channel. Okay. Let's make his channel actually on the down be... Um, does orange work? Yeah, orange should be cool. I like that plan. Okay. Now over here, we're going to want on the down to have an insert on the orange channel. And now let's see what happens if... And you know what else I'm going to do? Is I'm going to get... Um... I want some diamond and gold in my inventory as well. Ready to do something with that, right? So we're gonna start with putting the Certus Crystal in here, right? Now, it doesn't go in because the Certus Quartz Crystal um, only goes into a certain side. So let's change the side that this is going into because I think we want it to be on the north side. Will that work? Yes, north worked. Cool, cool. And it made that, perfect. Now I know we're gonna to wanna to extract and let's extract on a different color here. So I'm gonna insert into this chest on the magenta color, channel two. Uh, on the, ah, where did I put that? I put it in the wrong side, into the downside. There we go, perfect. Now did he get anything? Not yet. So you on the down need an extract on magenta. Real quick, I'm just testing. So what he stole, because he's accessing from the top, he pulled out the calculation press. That's not what we want, okay? So instead, we're gonna change this to sneaky on the north side. And that should pull from there. Perfect, okay, cool. So now, if I put another one of these in here, it should go in, it should craft, and then it should be pulled out. So now we know that the side of the blocks, any side, probably north, south, east, or west, is the middle slot of these blocks. And I think the top is the top and the bottom is the bottom. So for these four machines, it's all gonna be the same. We insert into the side and we extract from the side. Cool? Now, realistically, we don't want our printed silicon to go into this chest. We really want the printed silicon to go into the top side of this inventory, right? So when we look at printed silicon here, right? If I give you, now here's another test I wanna do. If I do this. Okay, so he was not smart. He was not smart. So now what we wanna do is we wanna filter this. So let's test this out, right? So down here, uh, I want to have a basic item filter that only allows Certus Quartz Crystal. Now, gold will not be allowed in there but Certus Quartz will. And then the Certus Quartz will be extracted from here and inserted into the top of this one. Perfect, that's what we want. Okay, cool. Um, now let's also set up a little bit of a redstone insert. So I wanna have, let's go with the red channel. That's going to be redstone only. And that's going to go into the north side of this machine, okay? So the reason we're doing this is on the north side of this block, we wanna insert only redstone on the red channel. And over here, I'm gonna set up on the red channel an extract. So check this out. Any other item in here, did you go into the side? Where did you go? Oh, you went into there. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Cool, perfect. Now I'm pretty sure these guys only accept one stack at a time, so it's not gonna put that in there yet. Um, but if I put redstone in here, he should be pulled out and stuck into the side of this machine. Cool. So on the magenta channel, it's going into the top, which is the default because the node is above the inscriber. And then on red, it's going into the north side and it's only allowing redstone in. Perfect. Uh, let's have another insert into this guy. And you're gonna be, let's make it the gray channel, channel seven, which is the gray channel. You're going to get silicon and you're going to go into the bottom so you're going to go into the bottom of this block okay 
this guy is going to be making silicon. Okay, so we want two things. First off, we want you to accept a specific item. It's going to be silicon. Did you get anything, by the way? No good. Um, so on the orange network, you're going to accept silicon, and it's going to go into the... Uh, actually, you're in the wrong slot. You should be in down. North side. Okay. So silicon's going to go in here. And then you're going to extract from the north side on channel 7 the stamped silicon. Cool? So that should be good. So let's get some silicon. How do we get silicon in this version? By the by, uh, silicon is made by smelting certus quartz dust or nether quartz. Okay. Uh, how are we for nether quartz? Oh. We have enough that I can smelt the stack of it. That'll do for now, sir. Tick accelerating is the best, isn't it? I love it. Look how much time we've got stored. As everybody quickly does the math. Oh, wait, 60 hours, but Dyer's only done 30, 25, bit. okay. So anyway, if I put silicon in here now, what should happen is it should go into the north side of this inscriber, um, but it's not. Oh, because I didn't whitelist it yet, hang on. So on the down face, your whitelist is I'm allowing silicon in. So now silicon goes in, it's gonna press the silicon, it's gonna extract on gray, and then get inserted to the bottom of this machine, which will now start combining. And how cool is that? All right. And then you, we're going to need more cards for. So let's get more, more cards, please. More cards. So I want to make sure my card holder is active. Quartz and those dudes. I think I got a few of those dudes left in here somewhere. There they are. So I can only make a few at a time, but that's okay. That works for me. And then if we check in here, we should have gotten 10 of those. Cool, right? Oh, that is good times. All right, so you now need to extract and insert over into this chest. So let's give this chest an insert color of, I don't know, what's one I haven't used yet? How about black will be the final inserter right but let's make sure that's in the down slot yeah buddy um and then here we're going to extract on the north side so you're going to be extract on the north side on the black color and so now our final calculation processor should be in here that's cool all right so now let's set up the rest of these right because these two are basically going to be set up the same as this one right so we need to insert on the north and extract on the north orange and magenta so on the downside you are going to filter gold you're going to insert on orange on the north side right and you should have gotten a gold perfect and then um you're going to extract on the north side on magenta and then that should go and land over here once there's room for it same deal here, right? You're going to insert diamonds only on the north side on orange. But make sure you're on the down face. Perfect. Okay. And then on the down face, you're going to extract on magenta on the north face. And I did that for this extract as well, right? Yes. Perfect. Cool. So once there's room over here, we should be good. So I'm going to put a whole stack of redstone dust in here. It should start filling this up. I'm going to put a whole stack of silicon in here, and it should start filling this up. And what should happen now is this silicon will print. It will move over to the other machine. This will combine. Okay. And then we'll get our printed uh, engineering circuit got pulled out of here and did that. How cool is this, huh? How cool is this? 
and then there's your gold, and now it's just going to keep making more silicon. But I'm going to put, um, you know, I'm going to get a few more of this, and I'm going to get a few more of this, and I'm going to get a few more of this, right? So now with these guys sitting in here, everything should be running. How cool is that? Now, we definitely need a little bit more silicon, so let me steal some more. Oh, we don't have that much more quartz, do we? Uh, let me get 44 more quartz in here, because that's how much I have in my inventory. Do, 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 do. And I'll put the silicon in here. And now this machine should just run. And at the end, we're only going to get logic, engineering, and calculation processors. And everything should be well automated. How cool is that? Oh my goodness, tick accelerators don't seem to work on these. That's a shame. They're anti-tick accelerators. That's ah, a bummer. But that's cool. Uh, now we can get some acceleration cards, and we absolutely will. Uh, so acceleration cards. Are these guys. And we need an advanced card. Don't look too bad. Uh, and a pure flux crystal. So let's get some of these and we'll get up here and craft right so acceleration card advanced we're gonna need a smidgen of iron i think i'm done with my lapis for now um so that would be you let me get two sets of these for oh you know three sets of these um <clears throat> and then acceleration card so let's see how this works That's better. That's for sure better. So I want these two to be sped up for sure. Because basically these three machines are dependent, each of them, on, on this and this. So by, by speeding up the Inscriber and Silicon production, I would argue that these two machines are now keeping up with the other three at the pace that they're running. So is good? How's that? I mean, I ain't gonna lie. Feel pretty good about that i like kind of like kind of like i'm just saying i kind of like feeling pretty good right and then we can probably you know that's pretty cool so there's your insert chest you put your resources in here your output chest spits everything out here fully crafted when it's all done i mean i'm down I think it's cool and power is still good nice all right now that we have uh that pretty much running and i do have a couple printed silicons in here and i don't have a system designed where it'll accept it through the chests so i'll just manually insert these two to get rid of them but in theory i should never i should never build those up right those never make it to the chest the only thing that outputs to the chest is this one so that's cool okay come back in a sec so here's the other thing i'd like to try setting up can we fully automate the duping of Certus Quartz seeds into Certus Quartz dust? So reminder, we need to turn um, we need to turn Certus Quartz into Certus Quartz dust, right? And we could also do that with a crusher or enrichment chamber for mechanism. So I'm thinking crusher for mechanism might play a role in the future, but we haven't got into mechanism yet. So like, let's make two more inscribers. One for um, that. Now let's also look at quartz. Does quartz have a seed? Applied seed. So realistically, it's just Fluix and Certus Quartz. They got rid of this process for uh, Nether Quartz, which is fine. So we're going to want probably... Okay, I think I can do this with one Inscriber. We might want to, but I could at least do it with one. Cool? All right, let's do this. I have a plan. All right, so let's try to automate the process by which we duplicate these seeds. So reminder, you take your Certus Quartz seed. Now we need to get some sand and I haven't quite planned around the automation of this yet, but we're going to start small and then build it up. Okay. So what we're going to do is as follows. Um, we're going to manually make the Certus Quartz seeds for a minute, but we will also probably sort of automate the dust creation step. Uh, does that sound cool? 
Yeah, let's do that. I like that plan. I like that plan. And it's going to kind of be recessed into the wall here with some nice looking glass in front so that we can kind of get a nice visual of what's happening. Uh, now that I'm actually thinking about it, I want this brought up a little bit more. That should be cool. Yeah. All right. So reminder, the Certus Quartz seeds, they sit in water for 20 minutes and they grow into Certus Quartz crystals. However, if you surround them with crystal growth accelerators, that can come down to 24 seconds. And there's nothing that says you can only have one seed in the water at a time. Absolutely not. So what we're going to do is we're going to have five of these guys set up like so. Now, they're all going to need power. And I may or may not have enough power for this right now, but we'll find out. And then how about you run over this way? roughly to where our power is getting created. Okay, that should work. A little bit of tin for us. So you can get cleaned up and you guys can get cleaned up. And that's pretty good. And if we need to pull out shrink, we can, don't forget. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm pretty sure, do these have to be, uh, I don't think they can connect directly to this stuff. So I think what we're probably gonna need to make is an energy acceptor. So let's get one of those. So energy acceptors from Applied Energistics accept energy. Questions or no, that's pretty good. You're good on that? Okay, cool. Um, what I need is a few more dust. I think I need five in total. I put an inscriber up here so that I can craft dust manually for the time being. And unfortunately, it's a painfully process, but we're going to automate this pretty much now-ish. Uh, so we're going to need some quartz glass, and then we're going to need our energy acceptor. That was not the energy acceptor. This was so just a piece of copper. That ain't bad. I do like mods starting to, like, you know, get used to having copper. You know what else I'm going to need, though? I'm going to need three more of these guys. One, two... Three. I should probably get six. I think six is the way to go. Um, so Applied Energistics has its own energy system, but it can accept RF or Forge Energy, um, which is what my things are making down there, um, and, and convert it into its own system using an energy acceptor. Uh, so we're going to do that, and then I need a little bit more glass. Have you been using connecting glass for that? Bad direwolf. Oh, I guess it doesn't super matter. Uh, that would be that. And then these guys are made with this, and that should be cool. Okay, and get me more connecting glass, would you? Because I like that stuff. It's cool. All right, so what we do is we place down our energy acceptor here, and he's going to convert um, RF into... Applied or just oh look at you you have a little oh that's neat look at that that's nip that's new right isn't that new I feel like that's new does that all look cool is everybody online now I mean I feel like the answer is yes oh my goodness that's using a lot of power I think that might be that might be a significant power cost I might I might turn you off until we actually need you <laughs> automation might be on hold. Automation might be on hold here. We'll see. Um, yeah, that was that was more power than I was prepared to be spending. Let's do that, and this will be our inscriber. Where did my inscriber go? Oh, that's right. I put him upstairs for a minute. I'm like, I know I made one of these. Where did it go? This one I might actually power straight up with RF. That might not be a bad idea. Though if I run it past here, he's going to be a problem. So what I should probably do... I can redstone control this, I think. But I'm going to hold off on that for a minute. Well, eh, it shouldn't be too bad. What we'll do is we'll just do this. I am a little shocked at how much power that was. I mean, I knew that these things were pricey in terms of RF. I just didn't know that was going to be like decimate my power reserves pricey are we are we definitely dropping very quickly we are definitely dropping very quickly 
Are we not producing? Like, what's going on here? How come you're draining power so fast? Because you're capable of doing what? 120? So shouldn't you be... Oh, I know what happened. Hold on. No, we're not actually doing anything bad. I had to break these because they were waterlogged. And I think I never set them to extract again. Now we're happy. Now we're happy. No, we're fine. We're fine. We're all fine with power. Uh, we might not be great with power, but I, that is that is a power hog, that thing, to be fair. But no, I think we're actually okay over here. That makes more sense. Yeah, these were waterlogged for some reason. I don't know how that happened. But I broke and replaced them. I forgot I had to, like, reconnect this thing so that it was an extract mode. Cool. Okay. So with that said, now I'm going to place my inscriber here with my cards in it. Okay. So now what I'm thinking I would like to do is I would like to have maybe, let's do this as a barrel, because I want-ish a barrel. I just want a barrel. You'll see why in a sec. You'll see why, it's okay. Are barrels two oak slabs? Because that would be perfect. They are, how great is that? So what if we put a barrel here, okay? And then we add an energy node here. Okay, and what I'm going to want you to do on this side, you're going to extract on orange, and I might want to filter you to only extract Certus Quartz Crystal or Fluix Crystals, okay? Um, and then I want you to insert on magenta, okay? So that should be cool. Now on the down... I want you to insert on orange, and on the down, I want you to extract on magenta. Now, that might need to be sneakied, right? So let's set that to north and north. So now if I put these in here, it should fully automate this. See? How cool is that? Eh? That should work. Okay, then. That works for me. Now, I would like to do that again. On the other side. Now, I'm going to need more cards. But the plan is, I'm going to have an open crate from Batania, which is a very simple thing. It works like a dropper, but I don't like droppers, and let me tell you why. Droppers, you have to give a redstone pulse every time you want it to drop something. I don't want to have to do that. So what I'm going to have is a hopper whose job it is, uh, or, well, it won't be a hopper. It'll be a laser IO node. But any items popped into an open crate will automatically fall into the ground below them. So you ready? Like that. When you're holding shift, by the way, it disables your ring of magnetization. There's another way we're going to disable that in a minute. So ultimately, this guy's job will be to do that. Is that cool? I think that looks cool. Uh, I might, I might want to turn this off. Does Energy Acceptor respond to redstones? I'm just going to break him for now, and that'll shut these things off, and that'll be fine. Okay, so this will be the chest that converts crystals into dust. This will be the barrel that converts seeds into fully grown. Does that sound cool? All right, so what I'm going to do is snag a stack of sand. I'm going to convert my flux dust and my crystals into this, and I'm going to combine them with this and that to get my seeds, okay? Now if I drop my sand on the ground, it should go back into my pocket storage. Perfect. All right, next thing we're gonna want is a vacuumulator from Thermal. And the vacuumulator is going to vacuum up the items from the world. So all I need is a bit of tin. I might need a smidge more redstone. I think I'm actually like super low on that. So I'm borrowing this redstone from down here to keep me up and running. So tin and iron. See how much redstone I don't have? I'm gonna have to mine again. Uh, so vacuumulator, we'll make it like so. Oh, and an ender pearl, right? Cool. And then I think I need to make a filter from thermal. That would be this guy, an item filter. Oh, really? You need signalum? Really, you need to nail them. So that's just going to be one silver, three copper, four redstone. And 
And where's my silver? There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Don't leave that redstone in there. We're low on redstone, remember? So three of these. And then uh, the filter is for tin nuggets. And then I'll put the tin away. Cool. So here's how vacuumulators work. They are nifty. Uh, they're basically magnets in world. And what I'm going to want is one of you. Did I burn up all my fluix? I might have. Did I burn up all my fluix? I might have. It's fine. We're about to get more. Um, so I'm going to re-equip my... So let's put, let's put it this way. Um, I think here's a good place for this to sit. The vacuumulator will vacuum up items. So you drop an item in the world and the vacuumulator will eat it. Cool. If I want, though, I can install an item filter into it as an augment, and then I can specify with an allow list or deny list what's allowed to get eaten. So I'm going to add Certus Quartz to the list of things that can be picked up. So now it won't pick up anything that's not Certus Quartz. See? Perfect. And the reason we want to do this is because we want to drop items into this little thing and then have them get picked up by the vacuumulator and then be sent via node to the network, right? So this guy on the down will extract on magenta, okay? I might need my shrink after all. Okay, this guy will insert on magenta and he will extract a very specific amount or a very specific type of item on orange. How's that sound, right? Because you on the down were magenta, so this side should be insert on orange. Okay, so and the items I want you to extract from here are going to be these two types of seeds, okay? And you're allowed to pull eight out at a time. I'm cool with that. Good times. Okay, now let me just take my magnet off so it doesn't become a problem for me. So if I were to put, let's say, one of each in here, they should be in the water now, right? Hello, sir. Where indeed did you go? I'm a little scared now. Where did that go? Um, Should have gone into the water. Also, why do you only have one? Uh, shouldn't you have two? Oh yeah, no, you have two. Okay. Uh, so yeah, extract only these items on channel one. They should be going into here. I might need to put that into a hopper. It's possible. Though I wouldn't think so. The open crate should just accept the items that I feed it from. I'm just gonna remove the filter for a minute. So that worked. Did I do something silly here? Let's try that again. Where is it going? Is it facing the wrong way? I didn't think Batania... Oh, yeah, no, it's spitting them out sideways. What's that all about? That's the reason I'm using the open crate, is because, you know, vanilla tends to just spit things around like, you know, it don't care. Uh, let's put away you guys for a sec. That should, that should be enough. And I don't think I need you so much anymore. Uh, let's try that again, huh? There's no reason it should be going over there. Oh, yep, yeah, nope, we're cool now. So it's in the water now, right? Okay, good. 
So let's actually turn this back on. So I want to put the filter back in. I think that was west side, right? So your extract card gets this filter. What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't do that. What is that all about? Is it the magnet? Is the magnet messing with it? Why is it shooting this way? My magnet's off. What's over here? Why you want to go that way? All right, let's try this. Connecting glass. What, what are you going that way for now? Open crate, please. You're killing me. Am I wrong about what the open crate does? Somebody tell me. A super crate box. Yes, no, I agree. Uh, duh, 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 can't offer enough precision. Simple to make a crate. With yeah, it's that easy. Um, and drops the item directly below it. Huh. All right, so let's change this up. Come here, you. Thank you. What if we put uh, the connecting glass, actually it's spitting it out the above on the left now. Why would you do that? Why? If you start shooting above you, I'm gonna like file a bug report. I'm letting you know this. I'm putting you on notice, open crate. Open crate, I think I do need my shrink tool. You, sir, are officially on notice. If you start shooting items at the top, we're going to have words, me and you. Okay, so I'm going to put my node up top. And facing down will be the insert of orange. Okay, so now in theory... Hello. Hello. This is the part where you extract things. Uh, why you don't want to take items all of a sudden? I think the open crate's being weird. All right, I'm going to feed this with a hopper. Let's see if that wants to behave itself. What? 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 All right, the open crate is being weird, officially. So I've got a creative solution. <laughs> you get it? Do you get it? Do you get it? I've got a creative solution. <laughs> what if we did this? Now, I don't know if shoots, if I can pipe into them directly, but if I can't, then I'll just pipe into a chest sitting on top of it. Deal? Um, I'm thinking it's probably a safer bet to just pipe into a chest on top, but we'll see what happens. I'm just going to be prepared either way. This episode is running long as a result of this. All right, so let's see. You need to get lasered up. Did I ever never connect your laser? That's probably why I wasn't behaving before. Yeah, I forgot to reconnect my laser. Uh, so insert on orange. Is it working? I might be magneting. I think I'm magneting. Magnet off for a sec. Is this guy doing the same thing? You're kidding me. You are kidding me. There's no way it's still doing it's doing the exact same thing, isn't it? That is being weird. It might be the seeds themselves. That's like my new theory. It might be the seeds themselves are weird. I'm gonna try the shoot from Quark. So I feel like that's a similar dude. That's feeling better. That's seeming more reliable. Okay, that's what we want. Okay. 
Cool. And then on the down, you're going to do the extract purple thing. Perfect. So now if we reconnect power... Boy, is this episode going to be long. Um... These guys should grow super quick now, right? So if we watch the seeds in there, they should be growing pretty quickly. See them growing? See them? They're growing. And then what should happen is the Certus Quartz one will be vacuumed up by the Vacuumulator, and the pure Certus one will not, um, because I haven't added it to the whitelist yet, because I didn't have any pure Certus to add to the whitelist. I wonder if I can drag from JEI over here. Uh... The Fluix guy. Can I drag from JEI? Aw. I'm going to have to talk to Mr. Lemming about that. Uh, so let's magnet that up. So that I can now add you to the list. Cool. Perfect. Right? So now I put this in here. And I put this in here. And they get dropped beautifully. Okay. Cool. Okay, I like this. I'm gonna go put you back in create land. And if we come back here in time, we should see these crystals almost fully grown. And then once they're fully grown, the vacuumulator will suck them up, and then the lasers will put them in the chest here, right? So we should have three and two. Nice, perfect, just in time. Cool, and this can happen, you know, stacks at a time. We like this, I think this is cool. I'm open to your feedback. If you agree or disagree, I'm welcome to hear it. For now, Double Twice sign off because it's way too late. Hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time and properly start using some of the resources that we automated today. All right, everyone. Take it easy. I kind of just want to let it. I just, I just want to see it finish. There we go. Look at that. I should, I should set you on the down to this. Perfect. All right. Take it easy.